Before we get to the show, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Kravit Inc. for sponsoring the show. Have you heard the majority of Kravit Inc. products are in stock and ready to ship within days? Yes. Order your favorite patterns from Kravit's exclusive in-stock collections. You can keep your interior design projects on track with Kravit Inc. Go to Kravit dot com today to set up an account and I want you to jot down this code a w d b one zero you can use this code for 10 percent off any one order of Kravit fabric wallpaper or trim when you order online a w d b one zero go to Kravit.com today and get started Welcome to A Well-Designed Business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Do you dream about writing your own interior design book, a coffee table book that is? I know, right? It's, it's, I'm sure many of you have thought about it and wondered what exactly goes into it, how much work goes into it, how do you get the book deal, who do you connect with, all the things. Well, my guest today is going to help us out with that. Lauren Lee is with us. Lauren is the founding director of Melbourne-based interior design studio Sasala, where she has built a reputation reputation for creating atmospheric spaces that beautifully reflect her clients' personalities and desires. She has actually published two books, both with Thames and Hudson. The first is The New French Look, and the next is Beachside Modern. All right, now, Lauren's talents extend beyond writing books and her interior design studio. She is also a passionate mentor, running courses and workshops through the Design Society to help designers live creative lives and build successful businesses. So if you've ever wondered about the realities of writing a design book from the creative process to the business side of things, you're in for a treat. Lauren's story is a testament to the unexpected opportunities that can arise when you are consistently sharing your passion and your expertise with the world. Now, Lauren was doing all of this while working with clients on interior design projects, and I know that could not have been easy. It's especially hard if you're not using a project management system like MyDoma Studio. MyDoma makes it easy to streamline your processes, track projects, communicate with clients, and generally be organized. It's created by designers for designers, specifically to address what you need as an interior design business owner. I've said countless times that systems and processes are how you reach that next level of profitability. MyDoma makes it easy to do that. And you can get 20% off your first three months by going to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. All right, let's meet Lauren and hear more about her experience turning her interior design knowledge into published works that are now opening new doors in her career. Hi, Lauren. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Oh, it's a pleasure, Luann. Thank you so much for having me. This is fun, right? Like we've been like Instagramming friends here for a a pretty long while at this point, right? Well, I mean, as... I feel like I already am your friend. It's been a one-way sort of sided <laughs> relationship, but I'm a long-time listener, so it's really nice to chat in person, sort of. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So here's the thing. We, you know, look, you know, we had to do like 25 minutes to figure out what we're going to talk about because you're a very busy lady and you have lots of things that we could talk about. Um, you have an e-commerce site. You have been a design blogger for eight years in a very prestigious 
blog in Australia called The Design Files, not to be confused for our U.S. listeners with the platform for project management. Um, But this is a big, big blog that started, I think you said to me, back in 2008 at the height of blogging. Um, And it's consumer facing. So you've established quite a niche for yourself as a leader in Australian design. And last year, uh, here's what's interesting. Your first, first book, The New French Look, I just realized, I just checked with you. It came out in 2023. And one year later, the, the modern, uh, the beachside modern is out like back to back big books like this in two years or was, am I mistaken? Is the new French look out 2022? Oh gosh. They were released about six months apart. So it's insanity. So this was just six months ago that Mm -hmm. this is brand new, this other Mm, book pretty much. Yeah, it is. So, um, I basically wrote them at the same time. (laughs) Um, yeah. So we, we knew that we had two books that we were doing, um, and we just released the, the new French look. And then I scrambled to finish off the beachside modern book. (laughs) So that's crazy. mm, Yeah. That was quite intense. And so I, yeah, I have the new French lookbook, okay? And first of all, it's beautiful. Oh, thank like you. Like all the designers who like all the pretty are going to love it a lot, okay? Um, I have a couple of questions for you on the actual execution of this book, right? So I can appreciate for its beauty. I can see, and I've read probably two or three chapters of it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not into the pretty, you know that me, Lauren, <laughs> right? So I read enough to know that you did a good job, um, but I don't really care how to design for the French look. So I didn't keep going. Yeah, that's to fair. The that's truth. fair. <laughs> um, but um, it is beautifully done. So here's my question. Take me to idea generation. Is this you, Lauren, saying, I've got these two books in me. I'm going to hit up Tenzin Hudson, the publisher, pitch these books. Or maybe because of your um, writing and your established credibility in Australia for the last eight years, did they come to you and say, hey, sweetie, you look like a great candidate. You got a good following. Um, Let's do some books together. How did it go, Lauren? Um, I'll take option B. (laughs) Okay, okay. um, I loved writing and never, ever considered myself a writer, though. You know how you just kind of do what you do. Um, so <laughs> the the new French look, it came about from a blog that I wrote, a blog post uh, that I wrote for the Design Files a few years ago. So oh, I went to the Milan Furniture Fair, I think it was 2017, um, amazing, inspiring. I grabbed a whole lot of international magazines on my way out and a bunch of them were French. So, you know, I said to the design files, I want to write about these, all of these amazing French designers. So that's how it kind of started. Um, and with the design files writing different, um, just, I mean, they just gave me this creative freedom to write about the things that I was just interested about at the time, which was so fun. Mm, and, you know, I'd right? be, yeah. I'd be sitting at my computer, you know, typing away and researching images. It's so fun. And my husband, Phil, because he works in the business, he's like, "Um, what are you doing? Like, you're still writing that story. (laughs) Do you have other, you know, pressing client work to do? We have a $500,000 client (laughs) over here that needs furniture. I know, I know. So it's sort of weird, (laughs) the things he sort of draw to. And yeah, so um, that's how it sort of began. And it was... um, one day getting a phone call from um, one of the amazing sort of producers, editors at um, Thames and Hudson saying, oh, we really like those blog posts. Would you like to do a book series with us? So I never, wow. ever, yeah, so you just you just never know when you put stuff out there what could happen. Hmm. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And so the thing is that walk for, listen, you're – path to it came. You're, you're producing lots of content. This is like you said, you're making a joke. Your husband's like, Hey, are you still working on that article over there? But you know, look, I've written a a thing or two in myself in my day and it is your head goes down. You don't come up for hours, especially if you care about what you're writing. Right. Um, I not at to that level, I don't think, but you know, I've written for window fashion vision magazine. This is the first year after eight years that I'm not writing for the magazine. Uh And 
it is a commitment, right? It is a commitment to keep coming up with the content and to put your best foot forward on it. Um, when, so what I'm saying is it's not the only path to being asked to write a book or being able to be in a position to pitch a book, which is creating content for some national known entity. It was your path. What I want to say is, okay, interesting, but to the next step, however we got there, now it's like, well, what does that mean, write a book? And what do I have to deliver? And what's the timeline for it? And how did those conversations happen, Lauren? Because once we all get the opportunity, anybody who's interested, right? There's, you know, I meet designers all the time that tell me they'd love to write a book on design, right? So however you network that opportunity, then there is the like, how is it going to look and how are you going to create the content? What did you do with that? So oh, it's uh, it's a little tricky because I didn't go out, uh, unfortunately, maybe, I didn't go to France with photographer and shoot projects. Right. So I had to source project imagery. Um, so it's, it's sort of writing and it's also accessing images and so it just meant that I was access I was able to access the most incredible projects by like designers that I really admire um, over in France so writing the book like what that looks like it's accessing images and it's writing at the same time and, and that got a bit tricky at times because there were some projects that I really wanted to write about and the imagery wasn't available or I just couldn't okay. couldn't quite make it happen. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a bit tricky. So even just sort of mapping out the chapters, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can write, I can write a blog article, <laughs> but yes. how am I going to create this blog article into a whole fully fleshed out book? Um, and I mean, I have to say like Thames and Hudson were just fantastic to work with because, um, they did give me that creative, that creative freedom. So, um, you know, it was, it was great to be able to, um, think about these chapters. So once I established that and they were, you know, the city, the beach, the mountains and the, um, Oh, isn't that funny? The country, <laughs> the countryside. Country. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I know it. What it's is it? Tip of my I tongue. Know, yeah, country. It's been country, a while right, since right, right, I've right, read right. my own book, actually. Um, so, um, yeah, and then they, they sort of, once I sort of established those chapters and it sort of all fell into place. So let me ask you a question. You said something in there, going from writing blog posts, any blog post, let alone this series that you did on the French designers that you admired, to a book. Were you able to repurpose that content or is like, look, you use those six designers or whatever it was for the blog. That's their property at design files. We can't have it over here. Or was that repurposable? It, it wasn't really, I didn't really need to go back to that. Okay. Was it? You? And plus okay. that was a few years ago. I wanted to get some nice fresh images gotcha. and stuff anyway. Yeah. Okay. And now when you say sourcing, right now you're going out to the French interior designers that you admire and you're saying, I want to feature you in this book. I'd like to put your work in this book. You've got to get the copyright of the images from the designer and the photographers and all of that. Was it, was there an element of it that was, I am writing a book for Thames and Hudson and I'm calling on you. So the phone was answered, the email was answered. Or do you think that that didn't impact it or it wasn't even part of it, they would have picked up, like you still, you know what I mean? Did that open a door? Well, yeah. I mean, Thames and Hudson, they, they're quite a big publishing house in Australia. They are, but they're international, international as well. So, you know, the book was going to go worldwide, but I've never done this before. So, you know, some designers were very responsive um, and then it was trying to negotiate with a photographer and get everybody on board and you're a hundred percent right Luann it was getting the copyright and it was a lot more of an admin <laughs> sort of process yeah. than you know I sort of had this vision of me sitting you know Carrie Bradshaw style at a windowsill tapping away on my keyboard <laughs> it was not that <laughs> it was starting with a you know a spreadsheet accessing images sending out all of these deeds that our lawyer had drawn up so it was you know a different experience but um it was really fun and 
the world is small, you know, when you, you're connecting with these designers that you've really admired and they're just really cool and really lovely and really cooperative oh. and it just makes the whole process so fun and it's so exciting. And I would think most people are flattered to be asked to be involved, right? Like, it's like, wait, you want my stuff in your book? Like, that's awesome, exactly. right? Exactly. I think, you know, the designers are like, oh, wow, that sounds fantastic. And when you can sort of name drop a few of the other designers, I think that helps as well. But as I yes. said, I think the, the main part of it and is just hopefully getting the photographers on board because at the end of the day, it's it's their copyright that we need to get and off. that seems like it wasn't so straightforward. And like, what is the problem? What are they nudgy about? It's also their work getting in and getting credited. Like, why was it like, why was there friction there? Do you know like what that was about? Well, or is it just the logistics? It wasn't that they didn't want to. It's just the logistics is there's, multiple steps. I think so. There's a few different things. Um, some of the images had already been sort of embargoed. So they were used in other publications. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, some of the, does some of the photographers are like the best photographers in the world. <laughs> so it was, I was mm. a little intimidated, um, but it was just like a huge learning process. And I think, you know, I sort of did hit my stride and I, I got into the hang of it and started figuring exactly. it out. Exactly. Say this, and that happens, and then I can do well, this. Well, I mean, right? I've been doing this for the, the blog as well, for the design files, you know, accessing images. Um, and I think, depends on how they the photographers think about it you know with the blog it's a it's it's done and it's it's out but it's it's always going around in the world but with a book it's quite permanent you know it's just a a little different so it it required all of those copyright you know things to be in place and what you're saying is is this a thing like for example if an image you were interested in maybe was featured in AD UK or AD New York or wherever it was, then there are times where that publication owns it and the um, and the photographer photographer can't even give you copyrights at that point. Is that a thing? 100%. Or the photographer Oh. So, so oh, sometimes the photographer gives up full rights, not just shares rights or something. Well, I think that if they they were commissioned by a magazine to shoot a project, then the magazine gotcha. sort of holds that. Oh, exactly. Gotcha. And sometimes I would hear back from them and it was this, this huge email trail going around and around and that never went anywhere. <laughs> 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 and you know, I've got this deadline for the book. Get 14 suits in a room and nobody can make right. a decision, uh, right? Yeah. So I was just like, and on. I wasn't understanding that distinction. Sometimes a magazine like that is the, like they hire the photographer, they do the shoot. I was forgetting that nuance of it. And so in those cases, it makes sense that they're like, no, our copyrights stop, go away, go home. Right? It was all just getting yeah. too hard. So I think I had to be like, interesting. Next. What's crazy is you don't have like one or two designers featured in this. When I think about this process, nearly every page of the book has got photography on it. I mean, how many total images and photographers and and designers did you have to wrestle? That's right. I know a lot. (laughs) I mean, between two books, it's a couple of hundred, I would say. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think we've got... uh... Oh gosh, could be two hundred images in the books, um, and yeah, yeah they are. I, I like variety, so I, I wanted to show, you know, a bit of variety. And and what I thought was fun that I wanted to include in the books was a little quiz, <laughs> and it's sort of like, you know, what's your French look? What what sort of style within that French, you know, um, realm do you are you drawn to? Is it the beach? Is right. it the city? So, uh, and and with the other book, the Beachside Modern Book, we I did a similar thing as well. So it, it just means there's a little something for everyone, hopefully. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, what's interesting, I found interesting on it is, obviously it's called the new French look. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, it really did. It really did educate me. It did really inform me to... Literally, like it's a it's the perfect title because you feel and you sense the Frenchness of 
the images, but they are not like what you picture as your every one of them or even most of them as your traditional what comes to mind when you think of French decor, right? I mean, you know, I've been to France a couple of times. Um, you know, I've certainly had to look at my share of design stuff over the years <laughs> in, connection, in connection with the podcast, right? And um, I was particularly struck at how so many of the spaces and the images did exactly that. The combination of harking back to a French aesthetic, but still felt clean or modern isn't always the right word, but clean, I think, or, or, or minimalist or something. It was just an interesting juxtaposition, I thought. I think that you nailed that perfectly, Luann. Like the, the style, um, it is more of a clean French style, but you still see like those beautiful, authentic antique pieces and yeah. laid with the artwork and just the use of color. I just, yeah, I, there was lots to write about. <laughs> Definitely lots <laughs> to write about. This episode is sponsored by Revel Woods. Revel Woods is your source for premium hardwood and resilient flooring. Using the Revel Woods selector tool, you will be able to find curated suggestions for each specific project based on criteria such as style, color, zip code, and usage. Because the species of wood that performs in a laundry room in Key West is not going to be the same as the wood that will perform in a living room in Chicago. And how do you know that? Well, Revel Woods helps you. Know before you specify. And when you sign up for a free professional membership, you'll get access to exclusive discounts and referral benefits. Visit revelwoods.com to get started. Yeah. And so, so now I want to go back, I'm going to go back and ask you more about the business end, but because the other book is just out like a month before we're air here, um, the beachside modern. And since I haven't seen that book yet and haven't had the chance to go through it is beachside modern. Is it Australian beaches? Is it worldwide beachside modern? Like what's your, like, did you go through the same thing there trying to find 200 images and 200 designers or did you go back to some of the same ones? Like how did that go? Yes, it is international. So again, I wanted to show a variety of beachside modern um, properties and in different interiors. So um, the way that I, I was like, oh my gosh, beach, like it's more than just one look. And so I looked at different, I created my own sort of chapters and one of them is called winter. And that's more of like looking at Danish architecture, quite minimalist and, you know, dark sort of moodier places. Like we've got a amazing um, interior by Norm Architects and uh, we've got um, Fair and Hay from New Zealand. So from all around the world, um, there's a style called Nautical and I was so excited to include a project by Commune. So in uh, California, um, mm. there's a style called beach coma which is more of like collecting things so imagine you know collecting yeah like um you know somebody that likes to walk along the beach exactly all that yeah yeah exactly (laughs) you know why I'm laughing there's a designer here Cass if she's listening she's on LBI where I have a beach house and we went for a walk one time on the beach in the dead of winter and we're all bundled up in our boots and our our parkas and we're walking along and talking all of a sudden there she is picking up driftwood I'm like only a designer oh, picks up it's beautiful. Off the beach. I like, totally honestly. get it. You're speaking to us, we all get it. So, and that's actually I kind of describe that scenario in the book. Like, it's not all about sunny days and you know sunbathing. It's like enjoying the beach and how you yeah. can interpret that. Interpret that for different interiors. Um, there was like an elevated style, so we included you know Kelly Worsler and Athena Calderone. Um, yeah, so I really enjoy, I think, the variety of the different styles. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I said, well, it's funny because, you know, as much as I don't do the pretty, I am going to make sure I order that book when it's available because it's funny. You know, I always talk to everybody about that. I do have the beach house and my house is six years old. We've had it for three years. The When the house was built, it was built by the owners from scratch to be rented out for probably five to 10 years, and then they expected to retire in the house. And so when it was built, it was designed by a designer furnished. Mm -hmm. So when I move in, when it's just under three years old, it's had two rental seasons 
it's all brand new. But now that we're in it three years and we no longer rent, I have to tell you, I've, Lauren, I've spent the last winter walking around, looking at the house as I'm in room and room going, we need to make this house look like me now. Like it's, and it does have that beach, like typical beach look. Yeah. And I'm just like, and you know, when you think about like what, and the thing is Vin and I mostly use the house in the winter. So we are there in the summer, but I can't even think about it in the summer because it's filled with all of our kids and grandkids. So it's like, you don't even enjoy it. Like you, you enjoy the people, yes. not yes. the house, right? It's like too much chaos. Totally. But in the winter to have that more, or like I'm looking at your pictures in your French, new French look. And I'm like, this is what I want my beach house to look like. So now I'm like, oh, but like take the tweak on that to the beach house. And I'm probably really going to oh, like it. Oh, that's so know? cool. Well, yeah. And I think, you know, mm. there's more, as I said, it's, I love that you use it in winter. You know, you can, mm. and in the book, there's a bit of a sort of get the look sort of page. So I've, you know, given mm. you like a, a tangible list of, you know, supplies that you can oh, have wow. a look at. And yeah, so I, I yeah. guess I really hoped that, Maybe not the typical interior designer or interior enthusiast would pick it up. Like I sort of imagined one of my friends who's not an interior designer. I was like, how would she like to read about this? Yes. And I would really hope that somebody picks it up and just feels really inspired to create just like a little cozy corner in their home. You know, I tried yes. to make it accessible and actionable. Mm. Yeah. No, you've done a good job, especially, you know, the, with the book that I've got here, I can, it feels exactly that way. Oh, cool. It's like you want to go and make your house look like these different rooms. It really, it really is something. So now to the business side of it. Okay. So you get, they come to you and they like, so when you say multi-book series, is there third and fourth planned or was the multi meaning two? Well, we have done the two and we're talking about what next? <laughs> so oh, they wow. were like let, let it, let, let's just give me a breath here <laughs> let's have a breather <laughs> and they're like once you've done the launch for the beachside modern then we'll get on with to the next one so yeah we're just sort of in discussions okay so how fun it's for so you fun. you've created a nice relationship oh, here so good okay and now into that business side of it so are there like first of all you must have had your own attorney take a look at the different contracts and the different deliverables that you had to agree that you would do and blah 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 but beyond that like did you have to deliver x amount of content in a period of time and did you now you're an accomplished writer i know you said you'd like i didn't realize that i'm writing but like clearly if you're writing for 8 years for a blog you're a comp a national you know a, a big national blog you're an accomplished writer did you like, I'm writing every word of this and then, okay, we're going to have editors for typos and grammar and stuff. Or is it, I've given you the guts and then you go ahead and put it into words and then I'll come back and judge it. Like, how did you do it? Yeah. So, um, I wrote, I wrote all of the text and I had the images, you know, it speaks to the images, you know, all the captions and everything. Um, a, a lovely editor that I worked with, um, she would finesse the words. So how many times can I say the word beach? <laughs> right, right, so, right, right, right. You know, repetition and just finessing and that was great. I feel like we really gelled so well. And then nice. the um, the book layout designer, so um, they're called Evio Studio and they're sort of quite a renowned design studio in Australia, which I was absolutely thrilled. <laughs> so when they put together, you know, the layout, I was like, yes, that. I'm not going to change anything. Oh, it's see. amazing. Just exactly oh, that. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, so, and did you give a mock-up of what you imagined and they made it real and you said you got it or you just said, here's images, here's the thing, you put your spin on it, let me look at it? Um, I didn't put a mock-up together for the layout. I did a few sort of mood boards to talk about the okay. images that, um, you know, I, I wanted to include. Um, and then I think when they were putting together the layout and then we'd put the text in there, we sort of said, oh, why don't we move? Like, you know, I, I mentioned we have like a bit of a fun quiz, you know, so you can identify your style because I feel like people love to be able to put a label on what it is that they like. I know, we had that at right? the end. So I was going to put it at the front. They put it at the end. So little things like that, which is totally fine. But it was just like a really great collaboration. Yeah. And once, how long did it take you to write it? So the process of getting all of the approvals for copyright images, that 
we can't put a timeline on that, right? Because it might have taken two years, but it could take somebody four, it could take somebody a year, depending on the cooperation on the other end. But the actual content writing, like you've got all your images, you're putting it together, you see the chapters, the way they're going to go out. Like, what would you say that you did? What what kind of time investment did you do? Hmm. Um, the writing of it was uh, not as long as you might think. I, I think mm-hmm. because um, it was probably, as I said, you're getting the images. Some of them you got the next day. Some of them took a while. Um, I basically wrote the two books in the in two years. So from beginning and getting the contract to it being released, it's taken two years. But I also can't really remember because within all of that, I had a baby as well. <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't even know what was going on. <laughs> Just, you know, oh along the God. way, I gave birth. Kind of. <laughs> That's incredible. Know, it's ridiculous. That's incredible. So it is a bit of a yeah. blur when I look back and it's sort of sequentially, I'm like, oh, what did we do? You know, I actually started writing the Beachside Modern Book. Um, and then I came to a bit of a roadblock with getting some images and they're like, that's okay. That's okay. Let's start on the French one. Let's just shelve that for a second. Oh, Get on to the French one. We did that. We released that. And then we jumped back into the beach and then released that one. So yeah, they sort of stop, start, you know, go with the flow. That okay. was great. Sounds like a really nice collaborative process with this publisher. Oh, amazing. Right? Like, Yeah. Yeah. And then from the, the, the business transactional side of it, you know, look, if you go to like over here in the States, we have Rizzoli, right? Corey, Corey Damon Jenkins and some of the big, you know, guys in our industry and women in our industry will publish with Rizzoli, you know, and I know that Rizzoli is like, okay, get out there and pound the streets, folks. Like we're not doing this for fun and you've got to be going on speaking engagements and panel discussions and you got to hit all the markets and you got to do book signings because, you know, the money isn't in the book typically. You know, it's my experience, unless you're a New York Times bestseller, you know, the money isn't in the book, right? So the publisher, particularly when you do a hardcover published color book like this, Typically, there is a big expectation on their part from them to you as the designer author. Talk to us about what that experience is for you. Yeah, great question. I have to say, Thames and Hudson, I haven't felt that pressure of me having to, you know, pound the pavement and sell the book sort of thing. Um, But I remember seeing an author at a book launch and she's somebody who I really admire. Her name's Karen McCartney. She's a really great Mm -hmm. author. She's an Australian. She started a magazine. She's actually, I think she's actually Irish, but anyway, she's Australian. And she uh, said in one of her book launches that, oh, you don't really make a lot of money from books. It's more of a marketing thing. So I all mm-hmm. I always knew that. So going into the mm-hmm. book, I was like, oh my, I wasn't like, oh wow, I'm going to make so much money from this. Like that was never my expectation. I guess it would be, you know, you'd want to break even and maybe I'll make yeah. something from them. But I think knowing that in the beginning, I was quite shocked when she'd said that because I think Yeah, I think most people are so Yeah, exactly. But then anybody in the sort of realm of publishing knows that that's that's just kind of how it is and as you said Luann it's unless you're a New York Times bestseller or you're you know you've already got this huge big name out there um so it is a uh it's a big business card (laughs) yes Yeah. yeah and that's okay and I think that's why if you want to write a book yourself you know you really have to have that passion to want to sit down and do it Um, and for me, um, it has been, you know, we had a a book launch for the first book for the, the new French look. Um, it was so massive and I (laughs) felt absolutely so grateful for, I guess, my community of designers and friends and everyone. They really turned up for me on that day and it was a really amazing day. Um, and then we had one for the Beachside Modern as well. And that was a beautiful event. Um, so, you know, I've, I've – and th- those events, are, you know, the book launches, they're things that the author has to – I have to organise that. It's not like the publishers are like, we've organised all these things for you. I mean, don't get me wrong, they've got 
a great PR team and they've put the book out there through different mm-hmm. magazines and publications, which has been fantastic. So that's really great exposure. Um, but that it is sort of, you know, once the book's done, that's not the end. <laughs> right. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's what, when you go through a publisher, it's pretty much established, you know, now I'm sorry, sweetie, you're not off. Get going. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the reasons why I did self-publishing and didn't even try. I was like, no, I want to write it and move on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I hear you know? it. Of course, a completely different type of work, what you've done here. I mean, obviously. So, but so the thing is, is this the type of book arrangement and book deal that comes with an advance to you as the author for the writing of the yeah, book? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah, you get an advance and all of that. Yeah. As you said sort of right in the beginning you're negotiating that and you mm-hmm. have a lawyer to help you um so you mm-hmm. get an advance and you and you get going but uh, then when the book goes on sale you need to pay off that advance so the royalty arrangement you you, you pay that off and then you start making I guess additional oh, for crying out that yeah, part I've never known. Yeah, so that's why it's an advance. Oh, it's fun? an advance of the money. Well, sure, it's uh, the word. Advance. I know. It, I <laughs> did not. Well, I totally know what that is now. But yeah, it's it's a thing. <laughs> right? That's so funny. You know, many times we've all heard that word advance. Like, yeah, no, I was like, okay, they give you like a small amount of money to sit in a, you know, not nearly what your hourly rate is worth to sit in a box and oh, write, yeah. and then they're going to make money. But no, okay. <laughs> But, you know, it's, um, I've had my struggles with it. I was like, oh, my gosh, like I'm spending all of this time. I have client projects, you know, all of the things. But then, you know, when I think about it, well, the, the publisher have got an editor for me. They've got the best book yeah. designer. I've got this great PR, you know, team. They are taking a risk on me. They're doing all of mm. this work in the distribution and everything like that I in a way when I think about it you know the author has a small piece of the puzzle <laughs> like, I mean it's still it's it's not small but yeah it's um right. you know they've taken a big risk on me too so I'm really yeah really grateful for the opportunity it's been really fun it's interesting and it doesn't surprise me that they're saying what what's the next that they're making it a series like in other words from the business side of it. In other words, if the if the, the one book you wrote was the new French look, it's a beautiful book, it's great content, all the things, I could see it. But because I think what I'm what I'm observing is bumping them out one after another because here's what I'm saying is if I thought I'm the publisher, all I'm ever really going to do is two books with Lauren Lee. Well, then I'm not putting them out within months of each other. I'm milking everything I can for the first book. And then when I've made sure I've told every blessed interior designer and design enthusiast on the planet, then it's like, oh, okay, you want more from her? Here, we've got the other one. But because they pushed one right after another, I'm like, yeah, the whole thing now is the series. It's like, get hooked on Lauren Lee and don't get enough of her, right? Like, that's what it feels like to me. Thank you. Yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to get cracking on the next one. <laughs> kind of fun. Question for you. Um, when they approached you on doing the book, of course, they got the seed of the idea from reading your blog post where you were writing about, like you said, you were doing this as a blog, right? Featuring different French designers and so forth. Um, once somebody, once they approached you, did you then go, oh, what other books in the world are similar to this? Let me go look at the way they've been approached with chapter styling and, and division of content. Or did you just keep going in your own lane and with your head down and didn't look around? I do love reading design books. <laughs> so okay. I do like, I like holding them. I like having them as styling objects, but I actually sometimes occasionally open them up and read them too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Um, I wanted my books to, yeah, as I said, not be just for designers, be for design enthusiasts as well. Um, Mm -hmm. So I guess I drew on a few um, sort of inspiration and tried to put my own spin on it. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's like, look, I can hear my cousin Eileen Hahn in my head. She's been a leadership consultant and organizational behavioral consultant for 35 years. Right. And Any time 
I have said, I've got this idea to do X, Y, Z, no matter what it is. When I tell you one of the first things that she has always said to me, who do you know that's doing it the very best in the world? Who, is there anybody doing anything at all like what your idea is? Go figure them out. Like, and like the first time she said it, I'm like, well, I don't know anybody that is like, you know, blah, 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 whatever it was. Cause this has been a question she said to me for 20 years. And then what she does is she pushes you to not be like, I'm not saying you're going to be able to do it. You're like, like you don't have the resources, that person, but like, just go figure out, just go look to see what are the best of the best in the world do. Mm -hmm. And I've always found it very helpful, Mm. you know, a helpful stage of research. Um, Because I think if you're a creative person, you can't help but look at what somebody does and be compelled to put your own spin on it. Like, if you're not creative, I think you could be, you're more likely to get caught in the trap of true copying, Mm. right? But those of us that are creative, I know my whole audience is creative, you're creative, I'm creative. It's like, I I just know instinctively, I can literally look at what you do, whether it's a business person, whether I'm looking at Tony Robbins or Michael Hyatt or Amy Porterfield or whoever it is that I'm looking ahead, that's burning the path of what I'm doing. It's, it's never once she's pressed me to do that, I'm never compelled to copy it. I'm always like, oh, that gives me this great idea for the way I would exactly. do it. <laughs> you know what and, I'm saying? Oh my gosh, right? I absolutely love the way she's done that. And it's so motivating. And, you know, it's, yes. yeah, it's like, wow, I never thought you could do it like that. Well, if she's done that, I wonder if I could do something like that. But, you know, in my voice, in my way, like I find that really yeah. motivating. So, yeah, I mean. As I was, yeah. You can't help but to process it by yourself, oh, right? Mean, because yeah. I think that's what we are as cre- creatives and visionaries. It's like. It's just like the impetus. It's like the little knock on the shoulder. Then you're like back to doing true creation again, exactly. right? And, you know, you have to know what the best in the business are doing. Like, you know, you've yeah. got to have all of that on your radar. Yeah. yeah. And it's so funny because um, what the other thought side is, is sometimes you do find that no one's doing it the way you imagine it to be done. You know what I mean? And or sometimes I've had situations where I'm like, well, That's so interesting. There's only one person that I can find that's doing it and not for nothing. I don't like the way they're doing it. I think they're doing it wrong. I don't think it's good at all. (laughs) So it's just like you get that little like, all right, there's a lane for me. I can, I can, I can go down this road. I love that. And yeah, it's like, you know, if you're sort of seeing someone and it's that sort of comparison thing that you can do on Instagram and you're like, oh God, how did, how did she do that? Like, oh God, you know get a bit jealous maybe well you need to check yourself and go why am I feeling that is that something that I also want to do and how Mm. could I perhaps do that in my own way and I suppose you know with the books they are a bit more approachable they're not like a very um the language is quite it's easy to read I feel it's It's a bit conversational and I used to think that was like a weakness that I had because it sounded Mm. too um just easy and I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think somebody said that to me once and I sort of took it as an insult. It didn't sound like a real writer. (laughs) Isn't that I know, but it's actually becomes, as you say, your thing and your voice. And it's, that's actually what I I like. I like to write like I'm talk, like I'm speaking to someone, like talking to a friend. So um, yeah, that's, I guess, where it sets me apart. It's so funny because my first book, the making of a well-designed business is in my mind, it's business 101. It's the 10 chapters. You're going to open up a business, cover these 10 bases because don't skip them. Don't pass go. Don't collect your $200. <laughs> Sit down with each of these. You know, I didn't write the business principles of the world. Like they're there. They're there for thousands of years. We've done commerce for thousands of years. I just put it into my spin and my take. And I have a very good friend who teaches entrepreneurship at a university and he read the book and he looked at me and he goes, it's really folksy. And I had like, and thankfully I'm not 40 years old when I wrote this book. I was a grown woman (laughs) and standing in my space. You know what I mean? And I just looked at him and for like a split second. And I just, I just like looked at him and thankfully he finished. He goes, it's so you. And I just now still looking at him and he goes, 
I wish I could use this book for my entrepreneur class. He goes, I love this book better than the books that the university gives me. He goes, because it's relatable and understandable. And I just, then I was like, thank God I didn't cut him off and smack him in the face and all the different things. Right. Um, but, and he said to me, he goes, he actually said, how did you have the courage to just do it? So in plain English. And I said, because I was writing for my podcast listeners, yes. not New York times. Yes. You know love that. I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, even yeah. with, um, Lucy, so Lucy is the editor of the design files, the blog that I've been, you know, contributing to for a lot of years. You know, I, I actually asked her one day, I said, why did you ask me? Like, I'm just so curious because sometimes people ask me, oh, how can I write for the design files? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and she just, I, and I used to have a blog, you know, back in the day. And I said, oh, did you used to read my blog? She's like, no, I didn't know you had one. I was like, okay, nobody read it. That's fine. <laughs> but she said she liked, <laughs> she liked the way, um, you know, the tone of voice, the more approachable kind of vibe, which sort of suits with her things. So yeah, you don't you don't realize it's a thing that you're yeah. doing, do you? You just it's just what you do. You just gotta do you. Exactly, you gotta and do yeah, you, you have all of those people on your radar that are doing the best, you know, amazing world stage. But then you're like, that's so awesome. But that's you, and I gotta just do yes. me because that's all I can do. And that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember thinking there are a lot of business books to teach it to you with a firm, formal voice and a formal process and a framework and all of that. I'm like, who just talks to the interior designers and the window treatment people that I know and just says, this is step one. This is step yeah. two. Let's not overthink oh, this. Totally. Just do this. Yes. <laughs> you know? So, but it is funny, right? Because you have to be willing to be you and do you. And, but that is the also part of it. It's like, figure out like what it is that you have and is there something somebody doing that put your spin on it put you in it or is there a, a gap in the marketplace like there's room for this right and the only way you know how to figure that out is just by doing it by writing yeah. so you know as I said I wrote yeah. a blog for years that nobody read apart from my mum and whatever <laughs> but you know I'm thinking about oh well what good practice that was like for this you know so I guess you just got to start somewhere and you know think about That's it but you've it. just got to put words down to yeah yeah I love it so so we're gonna do you, is is it the t sort of thing where you are obliged to not speculate on what the coming titles would be is that like like it, I could see that being like I'm not allowed to talk about it um, or are you able to speculate on what the coming books in the series might be well when Thames and Hudson approached me they did have a bit of a list of some of the blogs that I've written in the past okay. yeah so um, one of them was you know country that's pretty broad one of them was mm -hmm. um, Japanese kind of interiors one was a um LA style like I mm. had a few so we've been sort of musing on a few and um on where what yeah, direction yeah yeah and I mean yeah. I've got things that I can write about underwater like I could just go on and on but then there's also I guess market forces that they're like yes. that's very interesting that little yeah I mean yeah. Yeah, as, as I said country I mean is that saturated what kind of what's my new spin on that and yeah, what are some of the things that they know in their market, in the regions that they want to, you know, be making? Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, that's yeah. what we're sort of talking about now. Interesting, <laughs> fun, fun, yeah, fun. It is fun. Oh my goodness, it's so what you, you know. This is um, literally the epitome of, you know, what we say on the show all the time. Lauren is be prepared to be lucky right? Yeah. Here you are years, you started your own blog, then you parlay it into this nationally known blog in Australia. You put in all the hard work as you're raising your family. Cause you know, your youngest at two is the youngest. You have an <laughs> 11 year old. So you've been growing this business in this, this blog as you've been from your first baby being born. Um, and just plugging away and doing it and putting the content out. And of course, you know, we're going to wrap up now, but I'll put in the show notes that you also mentor interior designers. You have courses available online that people can go to your website and download on the different technologies and software and AI. You also do in-person like one-on-one -on -one mentoring via Zoom and all of, so there's a lot more that we could have delved into today, but that's the thing 
it's like, it seems like, Oh, she wrote a blog and then a book publisher came after. It's like, mm, no, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of things in order to be prepared to get that tap on the shoulder. Right? Well, you know, I was listening to one of your podcast episodes. I think it was called Joyful Abundance or something. And it was a sort of about manifesting. And mm. um, so I used to work in an architecture practice. I've worked for 10 years before I started my business and I used to love Pinterest when it first started and I think I wrote on one of those Facebook things you know and the memory pops up you know where's a job where I can scroll through Pinterest all day I would love to do that (laughs) and then I'm like scrolling through all of these images for the books and I'm like oh my gosh I am oh my gosh I don't really go on Pinterest that much anymore but isn't it weird when you put that stuff out there in the universe Right. But it's the same kind of like I'm scrolling beautiful images all day and this is actually work. I'm I not know. just doing this. I have this. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Even if your husband's like, hey, we got to come over here and get a project done. Nope. I have a deadline for the book. I have to do I this. I know. <laughs> well, you know, with the book, as I sort of said earlier as well, the marketing aspect, you know, it's been amazing having clients say, oh, I p- picked up your book at the bookshop do you take on clients and they've just been the most amazing clients because I think that's such a good first impression to have a book yeah are you kidding yeah I know so we've just (laughs) yeah it's been amazing so and you know what's interesting about that it's not even your work I mean is any of the work you're working here because there's so many images that I didn't read the credits on every one exactly I think I've got one project in the beach side modern book but yeah it's not it's not all about me how that's what's interesting like i'm aware that you're featuring the work of all these other designers but how interesting that that is still transferring to people that are like i want you to design my home that's interesting yeah i think it's the you know the curation of the images sure and the, the editing and- no, there's art and art artistry and work into figuring this out like i couldn't put together the images i don't have the talent to do it but it's not even like yeah someone, your husband, anybody could look at you practically and go, wait, so you're going to make a book of other designer stuff and you think that's going to actually be beneficial to your business? Like, what are we doing I know, right? Right? Yeah, I have to say, I did not, I didn't want to have any expectation. I did not know. So it's been a a really lovely surprise when that's happened. So who knows if it'll happen again, but yeah, it's happened twice and they've been amazing clients. So who knows? Yeah, well, it's like what every book is. It's a credibility credibility builder. It's like, I'm a serious person. I have serious I'm knowledge. Serious. I put it out there, <laughs> you know. And you know what? A lot of people are serious people with serious knowledge, but putting that serious information on a pen to paper is a whole different animal. Yeah, I'm just going to say. True. <laughs> right? That's a third step there, folks. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, this has been so fun getting to know you in real life via, you know, Riverside FM over across, all, you know, Melbourne to the States. So thank you, Lauren. It's wild. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. It's been so cool to chat. What a fun story, right? I just love it when I see anyone, you, flourishing in what you love to do and what you do best. For Lauren, she's a fabulous interior designer, but she wanted to share her voice too. And that's what she's doing with this series of books. I cannot wait to get my hands on the next book, Beachside Modern, and the others that Lauren will hopefully be working on in the future. I feel like now knowing her story and everything that went into these books from the writing to the sourcing of the images to the marketing, now I think I'll sit back and relax and enjoy the book with a whole new perspective, right? So let's take a few minutes to reflect on the insights that Lauren shared and how they can apply to your own career. First, Lauren's story is proof of the power of consistently putting your work and ideas into the world. Remember, Lauren didn't set out with the explicit goal of writing books. Instead, she focused on regularly contributing high-quality content to the Design Files, one of Australia's most prestigious design blogs. This consistent effort not only honed her writing skills, but it also caught the attention of a major publisher. The lesson here, don't underestimate the value of sharing your expertise, whether it's through a blog, social media, or industry publications. You never know who might be reading and what opportunities could come up. 
Lauren's experience also highlights the importance of finding and embracing your authentic voice. She mentioned how she initially saw her approachable conversational writing style as a weakness. However, this very quality turned out to be what made her writing stand out and resonate with the readers. So if you aspire to write, create content of any type, whether it's video, it's whatever it is, remember that your unique perspective and way of communicating are your assets. They are not liabilities. Okay. Don't try to sound like anyone else. Don't try to write like anything else. Don't even create Instagram posts like anyone else. Do you? Okay. Now, the realities of writing a design book. We talked about this before on the podcast. Gene Stouffer was here. John McLean was here, as well as Brian Mason and Janine Hayes of Afro Chic. They also got their start with regular content via a quarterly magazine publishing Afro Chic, celebrating the legacy of the Black family home in 2022. Okay, so we will link all of these episodes in the notes because these are all great shows about what a design book can mean for your career and some of the insights to what goes into actually creating it, right? So let's go a little deeper here into the process um, with Lauren revealing how it's far from the romantic notion of a writer penning beautiful prose by a window with sunlight streaming through your hair, (laughs) right? Instead, she said it involves a lot of administrative work from negotiating contracts to obtaining image rights. This inside look is crucial for any one of you considering this path, okay? It's more than having the ideas, That's important. You have to have a point of view. Okay. You have to know why. It can't be just another book about the beach. Okay. But it's also about being prepared for this business side of it. It's kind of like when you went into business as an interior designer, you thought you were going to be designing all the time and you found out it was 80% of the business and 20% of the fun designing, right? So probably the book, I don't know if it's 80, 20, but it wouldn't shock me if it was. Okay. So now, but that should not deter you from trying to do it. Please, 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 if it's on your heart to do it, go do it. Another key takeaway is the unexpected benefits of becoming a a published author. While Lauren noted that writing a book won't likely make her rich or you for that matter, by the way, she emphasized its power as a marketing tool right? Think about it. Having a published book instantly elevates your credibility and authority in the interior design world. Lauren shared how potential clients have approached her after seeing her book in the stores. This, she said, has led to some of her best client relationships. And this underscores how a book can open doors and create opportunities that you may or may not have anticipated. Now, For those of you thinking, but I'm not ready to write a book, remember Lauren's journey started with blog posts. You can begin building your writing writing portfolio and your audience. Start a blog on your website, contribute to the industry publications, or regular just share your thoughts on social media. The key is to start somewhere, and actually the key is to be consistent. That's, That's the thing too, right? Lauren's experience teaches us about the importance of collaboration in the publishing world. She worked closely with the editors, book designers, and her publisher to bring her vision to life. And this reminds us that creating books, just like designing a space, is often a team effort. Being open to feedback and willing to collaborate can elevate any type of work that we do to new heights. So I just love all of this. I love the opportunities that it brings up. And, you know, a lot of times it's about being in the room. For Lauren, she put herself out there in the big room, in the blog blogosphere world. But you can put yourself in a little room too, because I've got an opportunity coming up for you this October 2024 at High Point. We have our final stop of the Power Talk Friday tour on October 25th. Okay. Um, fantastic group of experts exceptional group of people will be with us. We've already got signups for it. This one always sells out. Do not wait. You for, Look, you got to get your plane tickets in your rooms anyway with High Point, but go to powertalkfriday.com to learn more and put yourself in that room. Get your networking going and get your ideas going, right? So whether or not writing a book is on your career bucket list, 
Lauren's journey offered lessons that we can all learn from. So I challenge you, what's one step you can take this week to share your design knowledge and build your authority in the field in some little way? Okay, maybe it's a blog post that you put on your own website, you put it on Pinterest and somebody finds it that's looking for what you're teaching and it just, you know, it leads to your next client, right? Maybe you could reach out to a local publication with a story idea, all right? Remember, just remember, you got to start and you got to be consistent. That's all it is. Two little steps, the start and consistency. Okay. So I hope that you will go to get Lauren's book. You can go to her website at dot au okay and put your order in so that will that link will be in the show notes don't worry about it and thank you lauren i'm so happy for your success and i can't wait to see what you do in the future um i just think it's awesome what you've done i love your perspective on the way you've done it i love your you know the, the heart it comes through and i really am enjoying your book so thank you thank you all righty thank you so much for joining me today decide to be excellent Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.